now we're up to we got a major daf tonight i wish we had a lot of time for the, tonight's stuff but uh okay it is what it is as they say so we're on the kuf yud gimel on base hey rabbi yochanan as we said rabbi yochanan said edus that somebody um if a woman become a woman or a man becomes deaf, right? So then they could get uh, divorced. Sorry, not a woman or a man. But he says on a female, right? A female who becomes, who got married when she was healthy and then became deaf, right? So she's allowed to, uh, she's allowed to, you can divorce her, right? That was his ages. Yeah. So Zimara says, Amar Rabba may do such a biachan and been good to Amar la Aidim. Ooh, now here I'm not I can't I don't I don't think I'm gonna text this one out and get myself into trouble like I did last week with fooling somebody. But if a guy says to the Aidim, Ru get ze shani noisen, look at this get that I'm giving to to my wife. Bam Allah and he tells his wife, Kinsi Shtar Khaiv Zeh, take this Shtar Khaiv. Right, and so what does she know? What does a woman know? They don't. They, a lot of women back then didn't read Lush Kaidish, right? So he tells his wife he's giving her a get, but he tells her this is a you know a star chayv, right? I raise him a koresh, she's divorced, right? Now how because how, what how do we learn that from our Mishnah? Didn't Rabbi Yochanan Magudu say that even when she's deaf she can be divorced, which means she doesn't have das. So to here we don't need we don't need uh, das, right? So Gemara says pshita. Okay, so that's pashit. If he can give his wife a get, and uh, and he could tell her that it's a it's a bill of sale or whatever he tells her, right? So mal the same as Gemara says mal the same as normally can see star chayiv zeh. Now you might think that when he tells his wife take this star chayiv betule butle, maybe he was mavatel the get. I mean, he wrote to get with Adam. He documented. Then, when he told his wife that it's a star chayv, he just was trying to pull her leg and, and whatever. He, I don't know exactly why he would do this, but maybe he changed his mind that the get shouldn't be a good get. Kamash Malan, that it is a good get. Right? So, because he, he said the batle, if he would have been mevatalit, la Adam have a kamalu. He would have gone to the Adam and say, by the way, I'm mixing this get. And this that he didn't say it to the Adam, Loi Batle Veloi Midi, so then it's not bottle at all. Right? Oh, okay, so then why did he tell his wife that he's giving it to, to her? Why didn't he just give her a get? I mean, if he's such a man, just give her the get and tell her it's a get. He's doing it because of because of uh he's embarrassed. He he's embarrassed to say that uh that he wants to divorce her. He's a wimp. He's a wimp, right? Mm-hmm. So, so since he doesn't want to do that, so he gives it to her as a, as a, as a, uh, an IOU or not an IOU, whatever. Okay, fine. Now we start. Now again, we said in the beginning of the, and we said in the Mishnah. So we said, Ananda Mishnah, the Gemara. We said before that it's like a cotton eating in a veil, meaning letting letting a couple stay married. Who really can't be married because she's a shaita, he's a shaita, he, she's deaf, he's deaf. So it's not a problem because they're not, they're just doing, they're not mechayev and mitzvah. So they're just doing an, uh, they're just doing an avera and you're not mechayev to stop them from doing an avera. So here we have one of the more major sugyas um, with Marchuk. Is, is he on? No. Okay. So we have one of the more major sugyas in Shas with a lot, a lot of practical halachic ramifications. Yeah. So let's see. So Rabbi Yitzchak Barbisna. Right, we had this whole sugi in Shabbos also, um, at least part of it in Shabbos. So, anyways, the reason why Mister lost the keys to the Beis Medrash, Rishus Arabim b'Shabbos, he lost them in the Rishus Arabim on Shabbos. Right, so already lost it before Shabbos. That's the Bach. Some take out the word Shabbos, right? But whatever it is, he needed the keys to the Shul on Shabbos, and he couldn't find them. So also look, I made the Rapidus. He came to Rapidus. Amrle said, Zeal, go. Now we're on to today's daf. Zeal, Jack, this is pre pre combination days. This is pre, that's for sure. Or pre days that you leave your door wide open. Or or you know, right. On, <laughs> yeah. Right. So Devar Tali Vitalia. Go get uh, bring little kids there to play. 
right? Boys and girls, right? Which is interesting why it's saying that. Like, what's the matter with just boys? Or what's the matter with just girls? Or both, whatever. Just put kids there. Okay, that's a, that's a diak that uh, someone will first from talk about. So I think some say, I think Rabbi Rosner had said this, that some, I think some say from maybe was that girls are better at looking at, the girls are always poking around. So they, they're better at finding things. So if you're looking to find keys, get the girls involved. Nowadays, I don't know if they're better at finding things, but they, they'll say that uh, Rameer Balanes thing and give a dollar to Tzedakah, and then they, you know, instant, instant, they find these things. All right. They find the Whatever keys to the car. They find the keys to the car really fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, now that costs you, right? Anyway, so let them go for Latailu Hossam and to be Matail hang out over there. Because if they find the keys, they'll bring it to you, right? So now these kids are going to do an Isser. Why couldn't he bring the keys? Because it's carrying Rosh Hashanah. So what's he going to do? Let the kids play there. What are kids going to do with the keys? They're going to come running home and they're going to say, hey, we found the keys. Right? They're going to say, hey, hey, we found the keys. So now that's your way out of it. Right? A cotton that eats in the velus. Bezdin is not mechuyev to stop him. Right? So, okay, let's just do the Gemara and then we'll get to the more practical, to the practical thing. But some, so, okay, but the diak to be made here is, is Bezdin is not mechuyev to stop him. What about his father? What about his mother? Why is it saying Bezdin? Why didn't it say uh, you're not mechuyev to stop him? So, some want to be medayik that Bezdin Taka doesn't have to. You know, a guy goes to bed and say, hey, you know, this guy's letting his kids rollerblade on Shabbos. That's a common one. Yeah? Okay, so then he goes to bed and says, hey, listen, if they're doing it on their own, it's not our problem. It's a cotton, right? But to tell the to tell the uh, the father might have to stop him if they're talking doing an Issa. Right? Okay, we'll see. We'll see as we go by. But that's one DF to be made. Okay, so let's say that this is a Bryce as a proof to this rule. A person shouldn't tell his child, bring me a key, bring me a, a, a seal, right, or a lock. You let him, you can let him pull grass out of the ground and you can let him throw things on Shabbos and it's not a problem, right? So you see that a kid is, this is a, and this seemingly is, is a daraisa. Right, throwing in the Rishus Arabim on Shabbos and pulling up grass on Shabbos is all this a deraisa, and you're allowing the kid to do it. The only question is, why does the Gemara change cases? Right, why does it say bring you can't you you can't tell a kid to bring you something Rishus Arabim, but you're allowed to let him cut grass and throw things. Right, why don't it just keep with the same case? Okay, that's another horror. Either way, Omar Abayas, Abayas says, and this is a very important teretz, Tylish, when he says detach the grass, it's talking about when he's taking it from a flower pot that doesn't have a hole, which means it's not attached to the ground. And since it's not attached to the ground, it's not an Issa Daraisa. It's only an Issa Darabonon. So an Issa Darabonon, you don't have to stop your kid from doing it. But if your kid's going to be doing an Issa Daraisa, then you'd be Mechuyiv too, according to Abayas. So the Karmel is the Rabbonon. And the throwing is talking about a Carmelist, which is the Rabbanon, and it wasn't in Rosh Hashanah. But in a Hanami, Abai is saying, if it was an Isid Daraisa, then you'd have to stop him. Right? So, and then the question is also, what age kids? But let, let's see the, let's see the Gemara Vaita, and we'll see. So, Toshima, Ayvim Yeah? Um, and now they're going to ask Kasha's on Rav Padas' din. So, Ayvim Kachavim, Shabal Lachavas. So, let's say you have a guy coming to put out a fire. You're not allowed to tell him to put it out. But you don't have to tell him not to put it out. Meaning if he comes to put it out on his own, fine. You're just not allowed to tell him that. Because you don't have, you don't have responsibility for, for uh, a guy uh, doing Malach on Shabbos. Right? But but if you have a, a cotton that comes to put it out, you have to tell him, no, 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 you're not allowed to. You have a chiv to make sure they keep Shabbos. Right? So you see from here that you do have to stop a kid from doing an Issa. Right? The, the, the Bryce is clearly saying if the kid comes to put out the fire, you have to tell him to, uh, to, that he can't put it out. 
So, so that sounds like not like Rabbi does because this price is saying you have to stop him. No, it's talking about where he's putting it out, not for himself. It's not like the kid made himself a campfire and then he got screamed at being an adult. So then he put out he put out the fire on his own. It's talking about where he's doing it for his father. He said, "Oh, I see my father's house on fire. Let me go put it out." So he's doing it since he's doing it for his father. Then his father's mechuyev to stop him. But if he's doing it on his own, then it's not a problem, right? The kavasei we want to ask. So then the kavasei right? The first part of the price was talking about a guy. So it must be the guy the oisal das yisrael mishari. So that means the guy also must be doing it for the yisrael. Are you allowed to let a guy do malach of you on Shabbos? All right now, this is one of the biggest misunderstandings in. In Hilcha Shabbos, Amir Akam, that that could possibly happen. People think that if a guy comes to do malach, if you totally voluntarily, that you're allowed to let him do it. The halacha is very clear: you're not allowed to let him do it. And if he does do it, you have to not be benefiting from it. So if you're sitting in a pitch dark room and the guy comes in and says, "Why are you sitting in the dark room? Let me turn the light on for you," and he turns it on, you have to leave the room. That's the clear halacha. The reason why people mistake it is because they know there's such a concept of hinting. To a guy, oh, hint to the guy, and then the guy could do it. That hinting to the guy is used, we've mentioned this a few times, um, hinting to the guy is used in very, very specific situations. So a guy, right, so a guy is not allowed to, he's not allowed to do malacha for you. So how can we allow, how can we allow the guy to put out the fire for you? So this teretz also is very important. When the guy's putting out the fire, he's not doing it because he's a nice neighbor. He's doing it because... He wants to make money. He's going to get some. He knows that the yid is going to give him a reward for putting out the fire. So when he's putting it out, he's not doing it for the yid, which is a way, which is a way to get a guy to do malacha for you on Shabbos. But it has to be, it has to be legit that the guy is really doing it for themselves. There's a chuva of Igus Maisha about using the old day, the old days in the elevators. They need an elevator operator. Right. So how else how else would people get up? So if the elevator operator was paid for every time he presses the buttons or whatever it is that he did. So when he's sending a year up in the elevator, he's not doing it because he wants to help the year. He's doing it because he wants to make a nickel or whatever they paid him back then. So Ramaisha seems to say that that would be allowed because he's working. He's working for himself. Right. So you have to rig it that the guy is working for himself. Meaning the way to do it is if you tell if you have if you need a, a light on turn on in a room, and let's say uh, you have some beer in the room. So what you could do is you could put you can put the beer in the room, and tell the guy, hey, you want a beer, right? If, and he says, yeah, okay. So it's in that room. If the guy goes there and turns on the light. This has to be done mamish legitimately. If he says, um, okay, let me go in there and I want the beer, and he turns on the light then you're allowed to tell him, okay, now don't shut off the light, and it's fine, but you have to legitimately give him the beer. All right? You can't tell him, you know, there's beer in there, you want, if you want beer, go there and turn on the light. No. He has to do it totally, totally on his, on his own, and as long as it's doing it for himself, then that's fine. Okay, fine. So Toshima, Ben Chavar, if you have the son of a Chavar, Chavar means a Talmud Chacham, meaning he keeps, he keeps Chumras. Sherogu leilich etzalavi imoy im amaretz. But he has, he goes to his grandparents who are, who's an Amaretz, right? His mother's parents, right? I'm assuming the reason why it doesn't say father's parents is because if the guy's a Chavar, the assumption is that his father is a Chavar also. But must be that he's not such a Chavar that he married a Bas Amaretz, even though the Gemara says not to do that, right? Okay, so I don't, I'm not exactly sure why the terminology is he went to his mother's father, but okay. It reminds of in our days when you go to the grandparents to watch TV, right? At least, at least by us, right? That's where, you know, the parents are from. The grandparents ain't as from as the parents, right? So anyways, so he went to his grandparents who was an Amoritz. So we're afraid that he doesn't keep the... Yeah, the I'm looking to of, change uh, that cycle. You're doing a good job, parents. You got a kid of brisk, what should I tell you? No, but that's not changing the cycle. <laughs> That's the same cycle, right? All right, whatever. Anyways, so so Ben Chavos Ragal Leilach Etzel Avi Imay Amaretz. He's going to his grandfather and Amaretz. Ain't Chayshim Yechlin Edvarim Sheinam Asukanim. 
we're not concerned that the grandparents are going to give tevel to the grandkid, right? But but matzah biyadai peris, if he does find, if he comes home with fruit from the grandparents, ain't and ain't zokaloi, he doesn't have to stop him, right? So here you see that you don't have to stop the kid, meaning meaning the kid maybe is eating fruit that's not that's not misukan properly. But we say it's not a problem. So Rabbi Yochanan, that's not a, a raya. Demaya kilu. This is talking about demai. Demai is the rabbon. Demai again is that the Amaratim didn't. We're afraid that Amaratim didn't take off ma'aser properly. So they were masak, and then anything from an Amorat is not uh, is not uh, fixable, right? So I'm not not fixable. You can't you can't eat it. So but demai is the rabbon. So for the rabbon, like we said before, the rabbon would be okay. So Gemara asks at the time the demai. That's the only reason why we're we're letting the kid eat the fruit is because it's my havadai. But if it's a vadai, by la sure, he does need to give mice. Rabbi Yochanan said that he's doing it for Al Das's father, right? Which is mashma that if he's doing it on his own, you don't have to stop him, even if it's vadai. Ella Rabbi Yochanan, this is a, a very interesting terrace. I found it to be interesting. This is, I think, a makar. For what us yeshiva guys do, El Rabbi Yochanan Tzvukim Mesapkele. He was Mesupik Koy Hacha Matli. If you're gonna say something this way, he's gonna push you and say, Ah, Efshe Faker, right? And Koy Hacha. And if you go this way, Matli, he's gonna push you the other way. Meaning he's not every time what Rabbi Yochanan was doing here, because it seems to be a steer in Rabbi Yochanan which way to go with the cotton. So he's saying, Yeah, Rabbi Yochanan himself was not sure what the story was. So every time you brought him a raya, he would say, you know, maybe the opposite, right? He was always taking the contrarian view because he wasn't sure which way to go with this. Yeah, fine. So Tashma ben Chavar Koyin, Sharagal Lelech Eitzel If you have the son of a Koyin, who's a Tamut Chacham, that also, again, goes to his grandparents, Amoritz, a Koyin Amoritz, Ein Chayshish Hashem Meyach Lena, Chuma Tameya. We're not concerned that he's going to get him Chuma Tameya. And if he finds Paris, ain't ugly. He doesn't have to stop. He doesn't have to stop him. So again, it seems to be a raya that's a proof that you don't have to stop a kid from potentially doing an isa. So my answer is, but chuma de rabbanon. We're talking about it's de rabbanon chuma. So since it's again a chuma de rabbanon, so de rabbanon we're not concerned. But for the raisa, maybe we are concerned. Now, what is chuma de rabbanon? Chuma de rabbanon could either be um, other types of grains, right? Not uh, not the chamesha saminim, right? The uh, if that's one thing, or it could be from the the cities that are near Eretz Yisrael. Now, there is an interesting din that comes up parenthetically with this. Let's say parents are not from. Can the kids eat in the parents' house? All right. Normally, how do you how do you, you can't trust somebody who's not religious? So, can kids who are from eat in their parents' house? Right. So, it's interesting that the Ramayish has a chuva on this. The Ramayish's chuva was was in the opposite case. Because back then, when the parents came from Europe, the parents were from, and the kids weren't from. Right? So there, Ramayisha talks about, can you go to your kid's house to, and trust them? So Ramayisha writes a chuva. He says, if the kids show respect to the parents, so even if they're not from, you can believe that they're not going to try and trip up their parents by not feeding them. Um, not, again, they're not purposely trying to trip them up, but you can believe that they that their machshiv, their parents enough, that their parents will keep, uh, will will they'll keep they'll keep the parents' standard. But so it's they, still they, not kosher kalim. It might not be kosher kalim and stuff like that. Right. So they're gonna say if they use separate pots and uh, etc. Right. If they're gonna use separate pots, these type of things. No, you're right, David. But uh, it's good to hear your voice. It's good to hear your voice. But uh, um, thank you. Yeah. But the other way around, the Shiloh is the other way around. Will parents respect their kids? Right, so some want to say you can put in Ramosha to that. And others say, no, who says? Kids, kids respecting parents is a more normal thing. Parents may not necessarily respect their kids. Yeah, but parents own the keys to the grandkids. That, that could be. It could be. I'm saying that's part of the Shiloh. It's just part of the Shiloh. From this Gemara's mashma. That we from this Gemara's mashma that the grandparents will give whatever they want to the kids, right? 
Meaning the, the Gemara could have answered here, not a good, the grandparents are going to for sure not feed their kid to the standard of kashrus that their son-in-law wants. Right? The Gemara doesn't say that. The Gemara says, okay, it's a Durabonah, right? So it's interesting. It's interesting. Fine. Now we get into another major sugya about nursing. Tashiman, this actually came up a lot, this, these questions with the, with the whole formula shortage. So Tashiman. So Yainik Tinak Mahayla. A, a Tina can nurse and continue nursing. He can nurse from a guy, and he can nurse from a behemoth to meya. And we're not, not scared, we're not concerned that he's nursing from something disgusting. But you cannot feed a child. Uh, it's a meaning a baby that's nursing, you're allowed to let him nurse from a guy and from a behemoth to meya. Right? Um, kulon, and then the Gemara continues, kulon, but, uh, and the baby's allowed to nurse and roll in him, even on Shabbos, but by a gadol it's also. We had a minig that they would nurse the kids from a behemoth to meya on yomtiv. That's strange. Imagine your kid is nursing from an animal. That, that sounds mighty dangerous to me. But okay, but that's that's what he's saying. Katani Mia, so what is Gemara want with this? Ain't Chayshu be Yonik Sheket. We're not concerned that he's going to be nursing from something that's treif. The halacha is that anything that comes from something treif is considered treif. That's the whole Chol Yisrael issue, right? Camel milk is treif. Pig's milk is treif. Right, even though it's it's milk, it's a separate entity, but it's treif. So here we're saying that a baby is allowed to, right? So you see clearly, well, you're not nursing the baby. The baby is nursing from the behemoth to meya direct, right? So it has nothing to do with you, and you don't have to stop the baby. So my answer is, you can't bring a raya from that, that you don't have to, that you're allowed to let a child do an issa. The are you talking because it's muted? If you. I wanted to say or... something. And I wanted to say something. It's it's not exactly the same thing, but I wrote in my Gemara the last time. The Panavicharov, one time he was, in, he was in America, he got sick. Yeah. So the, it was a hospital uptown. He was in the hospital uptown. They called they called Rabbi Tendler because they know he was involved. They had to give him transfusion. He said, but the rabbi won't let us give him a transfusion. So Rabbi Tendler ran to the hospital and he said to the to, he said, Rebbe, what you have need the transfusion. He said, I'm not putting Goyesha blood in my body. They killed the whole pun, they shamam, they murdered the whole Panovich. I'm not gonna live from their blood. Wow. So That's he ran really Rabbi wild. Tendler knew he went to the there was a few he had a he rear kind of blood the Panovich. So he went to YU when he woke up some there was some he knew which Bakram, some Bakram had the same uh, blood as as him. So he took the, the, the that's, transfusion that's, from uh, them. Yeah. That's pretty wild. Yeah, that's pretty wild. So we get well. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's interesting when you bring that because it's gonna. Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah we'll discuss it in a minute. But anyway, so that's so that's um, so that's the kasha. So the Gemara says, "No, from Sakana. The baby's in Sakana. He needs the nurse. They didn't have formula back then, right?" So you have to give him, you have to give milk to the baby. So this will be, now, by the way, when it says gadol here, it doesn't mean a gadol's nursing from a behemoth, right? I mean, a gadol meaning a bar mitzvah, you're going to nurse? No, what it means here, gadol, and Taisvis in, uh, Shab, in Shabbos says this. Gadol here means once the baby's three years old or something like that. I, I think Taisvis says two, three, three, four. I don't remember. But he said, but that's what he means. It doesn't mean a gadol. So he says, okay, but either way, a God also. So those are the, on, those are the good dialogue who make brachas on the mother's milk, right? Those stories. <laughs> right? I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. The good dialogue nowadays are, uh, you know, right? What's that line? You know, the good dialogue from, yeah, they're not, they don't make them the same. Either way, so with the Yachi Godel Nami, so my answer is Godel by Umdana. No, a Godel, you need to have a, yeah, an Umdana means you have to have, uh, you have to assess the situation and see if he really needs it. A baby, you don't have to assess the situation. If you think that the baby's starving, whatever, then you just feed. So then, cotton nami li bayom dina, cotton should also need an umdina. So I'm Rabbi Unabrei, the Rabbi Shua, stam tinak masukin etzel chalav. Stam tinak is considered masukin by milk, meaning you don't need any evaluations, right? 
You don't need an assessment, evaluation, whatever you want to call it. A stam tinek needs milk, so therefore we allow it. An older kid does not. Now, where this comes into play that a stam tinek is a silken head to is let's say a woman is having a hard time nursing the baby, but she wants to be able to nurse the baby and uh, she doesn't want to use a uh, formula because then her milk is going to dry up. So can she pump on Shabbos? Right? Can she pump on Shabbos and use the milk? We're going to see in a minute. It's an Issa Daraisa Mamish to, to pump. To, the Taisi says, one, it's a different reason than the but they are pretty much all in agreement that for a woman to squeeze the milk out of her on Shabbos is an Issa Daraisa Mamish. So can we allow her to do that when you have formula as an option? Right. So in the old days, the baby was a sakana. You, you do it again. To nurse direct is not a problem. But to first put into a bottle and then not. So it's a process. So now, if the baby doesn't need the formula, so the eitz to make it into Rabbanon and Tsar is just you put some soap into the bottle and therefore the milk goes, the ibud, it gets, it goes for nothing. So therefore, it's a Rabbanon and she's a Tsar. So then we allow that. Which, by this the way, is, it's it's a little you know women don't appreciate that necessarily that they have to take their milk their hard their hard earned milk and they gotta pump it and destroy it. Okay, it's a stress. But if the woman wants to keep the milk, it's a big issue. So Shem Zalman says in the in a footnote in Shmir Shavas Kolchasa, he says that a baby's supposed to have milk, not formula. It's very nice that we have formula, but that's what a baby's supposed to have, right? So so really, he paskins that it's allowed. That you can, she can nurse into a bottle, but uh, the pie skim don't seem to really go with it. So the basic eights of what they bring is, is tea from the pie skim. No. Yes, yes, but it seems like the, uh, yes. So but he really says it like if you have no choice, and I think his lotion is that if you've never given a formula bottle or something like that. But a lot of times women say, "Oh yeah, I give. I go to work or I go to the gym." I give a formula bottle. Okay, so Shilcha Shabbos is not better than the gym or better. Than, it seems to be talking about a case where she never ever gave a formula bottle. But let's say a woman wants to keep the milk. So the place can say what she could do. It's it's hard, it's not easy. What she can do is put the pump on a Shabbos clock. She puts the pump onto her before the Shabbos clock goes on. Then she ties the 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 suctions to her. So she's doing nothing. She's basically sitting there like this. Right, like a guy when he gets a foul, you know, oh, it wasn't me, right? So she's sitting there like it's not me, right? She puts it on herself before, it's tied on, it's doing the total mice is being done electronically, has nothing to do with her, and then you can keep the milk. That that's what many pies can say. Some pies don't like that either, but like this, that that. Do you say that? Answer. Yeah, yeah, I, I go, I go with that. But a lot of times women have a hard time doing this, understandably so. Right, you got to make sure it stays on. What the say? I thought what? you have to destroy the milk. I thought you have to put something in the bottle that makes it non-edible if you do that. I know. Well, weren't totally. you paying attention? You just <laughs> yeah. said. He said that. So he said he that, did. but this is if you want to keep the milk, this is an eight set of keep no, the milk. No, but we, I, when my wife wasn't going, like, did the eight set with the clock and everything, and we still destroy the milk, I remember. Correct, correct. But if you wanted to, because this is a real pain to do, so a lot of people don't want to do this, but if they really want to keep the milk, this is the eight set. This is the Eitzah, right? Preemies, preemies, they really want them to have mother's milk. So that's uh, whatever. Anyways, so that's that. Um, now, another thing that we, we can't stop, and there's so many things to discuss, I know we're behind a little bit, is the, what's Lamaisa with nursing from, uh, from a guy? I think I mentioned it in the morning, Habura, but somebody asked me a few weeks ago that she's in the hospital. It was this week. No, someone was in a train. No, that was week. something else. That was something yeah. else. This, this, uh, well, this. She's in the hospital. She wants to give her baby chalvisrol formula. There's no chalvisrol formula. She could take from the gemach from the hospital, which is which is breast milk from goyim. Is it better to give breast milk from goyim or not chalvisrol? So chal of akum, baby. <laughs> a legit chal of akum, parents. Very good. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> is it better which one is better so Lamaisa Argamari here clearly says that it's mutter to take the milk from a guy however there's a Rashba and the Ramah brings it in Yeridea he brings that you should not nurse even though Meikara did you're allowed to nurse from from a guy but you shouldn't because of the like like Rabarim 
you were discussing with the Panama Chirav, that it's, you don't, do you want all these trefas achim from the guy going into the, going into the, into the baby? So I had a couple last week who by mistake ate treif. I don't know if I mentioned this one. They by mistake ate, I think, mints without a hersha and had glycerin in it. Right? So the mother asked, should she not nurse her baby for the next bunch of hours? That was an interesting, an interesting Shaila, right? Because she ate treif. Right, so should she not nurse her baby for the next bunch of hours? I, I, I believe I didn't ask. I'm going to ask. I haven't gone to the to the rabbi circuit on this yet, but I, I told her it's fine because it's bottle, it's bats and bottle, and should mix them with other foods. And imagine what stress you tell the woman. She'll call like in six hours. Can I nurse her now? Can I nurse the baby now? <laughs> right? It's not. Uh, I don't think that would work. Okay. Well, that's like yesterday you said the Gemara that he by, by mistake he slept with with not his wife. Right. I can understand the eating mistake you ate trefus, but the other one I, I'm I'm having trouble wrapping my head around that one. Well, Yaakov Avinu did it, parents. Well, now you sound like I, me. Okay, very good. Ramara, we missed you yesterday. I was going to say I, I can't <laughs> believe he's not here saying I I, I don't understand this. <laughs> I accident. It days- was an accident. <laughs> in the old days, it worked a little different, right? <laughs> right now, it does. okay. Yeah, uh, Paris. Anyway. They also did, 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 these guys had two, three, four wives, so they could make a mistake with somebody else. <laughs> yeah, uh, what do you call it? But then we had the other child. I don't know if I answered on the daf. Uh, a woman is sitting in the airport. And she said she made friends with a lady she wanted to pump in the airport because I guess she was in pain or save her milk. And I guess not save her milk based on the question. And she said she made friends with a Gaisha lady and the Gaisha lady said, hey, you want to nurse my baby? So she wanted to know if she's allowed to nurse a guy. That was her shy. Right? So I said... What, uh, what would be I the said, answer with that? Maybe Lysachonim. Right? You're giving her something for free. You're giving a guy something for free. But... I, which I didn't think of that time, but I said to her, I said, I, I can't tell you that it's usher, but I'm not a doctor. So she the lady had court, court. She, lady was doing a courtside <laughs> seat search to Yaakov. Come on. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but she, she sent back, she sent back good point. Didn't think of that. <laughs> you know, you press- a strange kid in the, in the airport. Yeah. What are you saying? Can you transmit diseases through nursing if a, if a mother has a disease? I would they think could so. read about it in the paper. Right. So, yeah. yeah, I said so. Speak to a doctor, which put her mind, uh, set her straight, and she didn't. She didn't do it. Yeah. Okay. It's very late. Okay. So let's see. We still have a lot, a lot more interesting. Now we have Abba to finish the parak. Yes. Yes. Don't worry. We'll finish the parak. Yeah. There was a story a few months ago, uh, a a, a cop, female cop, obviously. Who was who was who was, who was who was she was a nursing mother? They found the baby, and she saved that baby by starting to nurse that baby. Seriously? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Interesting. It was in Mexico okay. City. Yeah. Wow. I hear. Interesting. Okay. So Abashal, I'm not going to use she yanked him in behemoth to hire beyond the minig is that you can that you can uh, nurse him in behemoth to hire on yamt. Not a so what's the case? Either you're sakana. If the child's in sakana, feel the Shabbos nami. So Shabbos also you can nurse. Be the lack of sakana. It's not a sakana. Feel the yamt of us. It should be also on yamt of two. So my answer is like three chad ikat tsaira. Right? We're talking about where the baby was bitzar, but it wasn't a sakana because some mefarik kilacher yadhu. Mefarik meaning taking straight from the animal is considered meaning that the baby nursing with its mouth from the animal is a shinu. Because that's not the normal way you get the milk out of an animal. The way you get the milk out of animals is with your hand, right? But so, so to put the baby there's a shinui. So Shabbos, the Isra Skila goes Rabbanon. Shabbos, that's an Isra Skila. So therefore, the Rabbanon made a They don't want you to do it even with the shinui. Yomtiv, the Isra Lav, like goes with Rabbanon. So Yomtiv, that's an Isra Lav, there's no Gezerah, which just shows you this, that uh, um, um, the, it just shows you that how important it is to when we adjust halacha for, for tzar. They weren't willing to do it on Shabbos, but they were willing to do it on Yom. <coughs> okay. Here's a steer to this Gemara also in Ksubis. Fine. Bez Hashem Ksubis will do it. Tashima. So then the Gemara has three, three rapid fire kashas. Don't feed them. Right? 
because or those who don't eat them kishaketzim loy soichlum loy sachilum, which means don't cause others to eat it, which means lahazar gedolim al katanim. What it does is warns gedolim not to give um, treif to kids. My love, do you tell him you're supposed to tell a kid don't eat, right? So you see that you have to stop a kid from eating treif. So you say, Lord, the Lord, this will every dime. Now you can't give him the tray for your dime. You can let the kid eat the tray. You can't give him the tray for your dime. Now let's just stop here for another practical thing. Okay, so your kid just ate flashix. Your four year old kid just ate flashix and then says, I want a cup of milk. Can you give him the cup of milk? To the Rabbana. To the Rabbana. It's not a Daraisa, but but giving Svia be your dime means even the Surah the Rabbana, you're not allowed. Like, it's one thing the kid goes to the fridge and takes the milk himself. Okay, that was saying that it's no problem. But can you go give the kid milk? Not so simple. It's not so simple at all. I mean, Lemaisa, we for that age, yes. But once a kid gets six, seven, the kid wants milk. You know, you want the milk, take it. But you can't necessarily give the you can't necessarily give the milk to the kid. Maybe after an hour, it's more maple. I have a shortcut text to this. I'll send it out on the chat. Yeah, Tashima. It's a Lemaisa. Yeah. Rabbi Yoyalish, right? When he tell the kid to eat the ice cream, Chanel bottles are in trays. Yeah, right, they were making right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now we do that with shaitles. Yeah, so Toshima. <laughs> so call Nefesh Mikem like Soichel Dam. You shouldn't eat Dam. Lahazar Gedolim Al Katanim to warn the Gedolim for the Katanim. My love to Amri Lehu Loi Soichel that you have to tell the kid don't eat Dam. Loi the Loi Lisa Levi Dam. No, you just can't actively give blood to the kids. So Toshima Emma Varamarta, right? Famous, right? Famous first words in Parshas Emma. Say to the Kaihanim. And they are martyrs say to them, What is the double lushan? Lahazi Gedolim Alakatanim. My love, Domalu Laiti Tamu, right? The, after the, the adults have to tell the kids not to become tummy. So my answer is, Loi, the Loi Litmalu be a dime. You can't let them become tummy. Um, you can't make them tummy, but if they become tummy, fine. So the Gemara, now why do we need to be cautious? It's here. The Ashmin and Shkatsim, because if you say Shkatsim, Hashem the Isura and the Mashu, because the Issa is a Mashu. Avadam to Adi Gravius, but Dam until there's a Ravius aim a light. Maybe maybe you can give him less than a shear, like a chatzi shear. So we ask me and Dam and if we say Dam is indeed a chorus, Dam has chorus. Aval shrots aim a light, but shrots maybe you can't give, right? So the Gemara answers. Um, uh, just lost the place. Um, it turned out so that's not saying Aval shrots him aim a light, maybe shrots him. Maybe you wouldn't, uh, you, it's not as chomer, so maybe you wouldn't have a problem. These first two is also for all Yudin. But Tuma only applies to Kaihanim, a Meloy, so maybe not. Because he adds extra mitzvahs. Avahani, but these, a Meloy, say that not. So Tzricha, therefore, you need to say all these cases. That's why we had three kashas. Now, we get back to our Mishnah. So again, in our Mishnah, just as Akdama, we'll, we'll finish the parak now, um, and then we'll stop. But, uh, okay, I hope I don't make anybody miss Mincha. But, uh, so our Mishnah, again, we were talking about deaf, a deaf wife with a not deaf husband and all those combinations. So the bottom line is, is that we wanted to, in some of the cases, we said that they have to get divorced because he's really living with his sister-in-law. Right? So if one of them is deaf, why do you have to get divorced? Somebody who's deaf doesn't have das, so they're doing an issa. So what? You're not making them do an issa. Right, that's going to be as kasha. Toshima, shnei achen, echad pikeach, echad cheresh. You have two brothers. One is pikeach, one is a cheresh. Meaning one is healthy, one is deaf. Nisu and shnei achay is married two sisters, pikeach, that they're both fine. May cheresh pal pikeachas. If the if the one who was deaf. The, who was married to somebody who was regular? What should the the husband who is um, is healthy that's married to the one that's healthy? So he the, she, he he doesn't have to do anything to the sister-in-law because it's a sister-in-law and he's potter. But let's say the healthy one died. What's the deaf one supposed to do? So he has to divorce his wife with a get. Because he's not allowed to stay married to her, because it's it's a issues of him. The issues would have potential of him. And the sister-in-law is also forever. 
So when I asked my mother to Why did he have to get divorced? Taste of Gabe that she could stay by him. Cut an eye on So she's no different than a cut, and she has no das because she's deaf. So she's doing an iser. So what? So when answers, which is a pasha to answer, Mishumi Suri today. It's very nice that she's not getting an iser because she's deaf, but he's not deaf, right? He's a regular yid, so he's going to be doing. He's going to be doing an iser, right? Um, so all the way around. I'm sorry. Okay, he's okay, doing right, nothing. He's the a Irish. Right. Okay. The next. I'm mixing it with the next case. Whatever the combination. Whatever the combinations are. Yeah. Thank you. Toshima, Shneach and Pichin. Two brothers that are Pichin. The Su and Shneach is married to two sisters. Achas Pichachas Vachas Chareshes. Meis Pichach Val Chareshes. My Yasa Pichach Val Pichachas. Teitzim Yishum Achoyz Isha. Meis Pichach Val Pichachas. My Yasa Pichach Val Chareshes. My Yasa Pichach Val Pichachas. The same case, except the opposite genders. So he has to divorce his wife. Begin. Veish Azach Bechalitza. Vamai Motzi Sishta Begin. Teis of Gabe. Cotton oil on the veil suit because it's no different than a cotton eating the veil and they're not doing anything wrong. So, my answer is the Shumi di day because of his issa, he can't sleep with her. She has no problem because she's deaf, but she he can't sleep with her. The third kash is a little different. Oh, my Rav, well, what's the Havamina here by these two? Hold on, let me just finish it. I don't go down where that's the dominant one. Yeah, oh, my Rav, Toshima, Shnei Achen, Echer Cheresh, Vecher Pikeh. You have two brothers, one is a Cheresh, one is Bikeh. The Su and the Shnei Achayas, Achas Pikahas, Vachas Cheresh. Right, so Mace Cherish Pal Cheresh, my Yasa Piker Papikakas, Tate Mishima Chis Ishta, Mace Piker Papikakas, my Yasa Cherish Pal Cheresh, my Tia Sister began. Right, of a Hafa de Lavi Suri di Da Ika, the Lavi Suri di Day. He doesn't, she doesn't have, I mean, the first case, one of them had it, each one had it. So here, they're both deaf. What's the problem? Let them live. They don't have to keep mitzvahs. So why does he have to get divorced? No, so people that are going to see this situation are going to think, oh, oh, they're allowed to, in a, in a regular case, the, the wife, the husband and wife could stay together, even though he's really, he's really being together with the Yavam so They're going to confuse this couple. They're not going to realize that the reason why this couple is staying together is because they're both deaf and they're part of the mitzvahs. Right, that's why this they're not going to realize that they're going to think in a situation like this, you're allowed to be married to your Vamala Shuk, which you're not. So, because of that, that's why they didn't allow it. They made him get divorced. Okay, Hadron Allah Cheresh, um, Allah Chaim to everybody. And I guess we'll be okay. We'll have to make this up. We'll have to make this up tomorrow night because of the show. All right, fine, fine. Okay, um. Uh, we should, uh, is it is it one more parak or two more parak? I'm looking. Where, two, two, two. Two more. Where's the two more? Um, where's the big Yavama scene gonna be? That's oh, the stay tuned, I'm probably stay tuned. We're looking for a very good. He's looking he announced for it already. Pizza, so we'll have it quite a cool. No, that was before. private. Oh, yeah? That just, <laughs> that's that's just, you want to have a Chalitza? Yeah, no, no, that just got awkward. I'm joking. What? You said it on Sheer. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Thanks, Gershon. Don't get all nervous. You didn't do anything wrong yet. <laughs> hey, Ron, you can send out invitations, yeah? Yeah, yeah, what? yeah. <laughs> I think we should, Patrick, we should make it the night of the Chasana. In, oh, by the hole. Rummy. Very good, <laughs> Rummy. We want, to, we want to post it that we're going to be celebrating this the Dafa Yarmi Yavamis and Marina Del Rey. <laughs> Rummy, we want it's a to pretty spitzy place the for it. Ruined it, okay? Oh, One second. We're, we're finishing the night of the Hasana? Who gets the homage for my yeah, Rummy? Who gets the homage then? I thought like Paris told me which, there's no manana is, for my Which that is I the biggest really simcha? To making the chasana at the Kanara or, or finishing the so. you, you, you always wonder who the guy saying Kaddish at a chasana is and what he's doing there, right? <laughs> <laughs>